All right, hello again from Nashville, where we have a beautiful view. I'll show you in just a second. But first, we got to talk about George Kittle's comments about Brock Purdy, Trey Lance. And in this conversation with Von Miller, George Kittle said that 49ers quarterback job is Brock Purdy's to lose. You know, Trey, unfortunately, has not really gotten a fair shot of mm. being an NFL quarterback yep. yet. You got a full rain game, Monsoon versus the Bears, mm. and they got hurt in the second game. So, you know, Trey's still got plenty of talent. He just needs to get out there yep. and play. And then you, but you can't, you can't talk about what Brock Purdy has, like what he did. Like he's fantastic. He, our offense was operating at the highest it's probably been, and you know since 2019. So I mean, in my opinion, it's Brock's job to lose. Yeah. But I mean, you, there will be competition because Brock's gonna be out till you know training camp mm -hmm. with his surgery. So it's gonna be interesting. But when you find a guy like that that can seamlessly jump in, I mean, I think. It, it's his job to lose. So what do we make of Kittle's comments? Well, first of all, I think anybody who actually watched the 49ers this season and is reasonable will say uh, those are obvious. Brock Purdy obviously is in the driver's seat to have the QB1 job for the 49ers because of the way that he played. He's been a whole lot better than Trey Lance. And I mean, Kittle put it fairly. There's context here. He said that Trey Lance hasn't had a chance to actually prove himself yet. So Trey Lance is going to have a chance. This is a wonderful opportunity for him this offseason. But Brock Purdy has done it on an NFL field with way better efficiency than Trey Lance. So what's what's interesting, and Kittle mentioned that, is that Brock Purdy is going to be out with this injury while he has this surgery for quite some time right now. That's going to give Trey Lance a chance to reassert himself over the course of the next few months. There's only so much reassertion, though, you can do over the course of the offseason program. Most of this has to happen on actual game day against NFL defenses in live settings. And Brock Purdy had the opportunity to do that this past season. Trey Lance, when he got hurt in week two, didn't have as much of an opportunity to do that. Doesn't take away, though, from the fact that Lance is going to be the guy out there here over the next few months. So that's what makes it interesting. But this is Brock Purdy's job to lose. And you can forget about the amount of capital that the 49ers have invested in Trey Lance. That's what we call sunk cost fallacy. Once you've spent something on someone, you can't let it dictate the actions that you take moving forward. That's bad business principle. Again, it's like war. Unpredictable things are going to happen. You have to roll with the punches and determine your best course of action based on the current situation and the current situation might mean go to Trey Lance because Brock Purdy uh, is going to take a while to recover from the surgery. Complications can happen after the surgery. Uh, he might not be as good after the surgery. I don't know, but you have to, I mean, that's why option power at the quarterback room is the strongest asset that you can harbor because you insulate yourself against the volatility and the lack of predictability that can happen with assets in the NFL. They have two of these guys under contract, Purdy and Lance. Purdy's job to lose. No lies detected from George Kittle. 49ers can't operate with sunk cost fallacy, but it could get really interesting this offseason because Lance does have an opportunity and nothing is guaranteed in the National Football League. All right, I'm going to give you guys a little view here of Nashville from this little park overlooking Vanderbilt University and this city on a beautiful February day. Why don't I flip the camera? And there it is. Vanderbilt, downtown Nashville, blue skies, green grass, and a fantastic view. They call this building that I'm zooming in on, by the way, the Batman building. I think it's the AT&T building, but known by the locals as the Batman building here in Nashville, which by the way, is where George Kittle lives in the off season. Take care.